All right, in this video, I'm going to be working the 3.1 through 3.4 group quiz for multivariable calculus. So first, we've just got kind of a standard double integral. Okay, first integrate with respect to x, add 1 to the power, divide by the new power. That would be 2x to the 3, leave y the same, because that's just a constant. I need to make that thinner. And we're going to let x run from 1 to 2. then that's going to be 2 times 8 is 16 y minus 2 times 1 would be 2 y and then uh, that's going to be 14 y so I'm going to integrate 0 to 2 on 14 y with respect to y that would be 7 y squared from 0 to 2 and that's going to be equal to 7 times 4 is 28 minus 7 times 0 all right so that's going to be 28 all right, the next one, we've got a region here. Calculate the double integral over r of 2x plus 2y dA. All right, so x is in the interval 2 to 3. This is best case scenario, right? Integrating over a rectangle. And y is going to be between 1 and 4. Okay, so a double integral, it doesn't really matter which one I do. I'm going to do 2 to 3 and then 1 to 4. It's just if I do that, dA is dx dy or dy times dx. And since I did 1 to 4 on the inside and those were y coordinates, my inside variable of integration needs to be y. And then I'll say, all right, anti differentiate with respect to y. That would be 2xy plus y squared as y runs from 1 up to 4. Yes, that was just kind of scratch work for now. And then that's going to be 2 times 4. 4 is 8x plus 16, and then I'm going to subtract when y equals 1, that would be 2x plus 1, and so I'll be integrating from 2 to 3, 8x minus 2x is 6x, 16 minus 1 is 15. And you know this is the type of integral we probably could solve with drawing a picture, doing geometry, but I'm just going to anti-differentiate. This x runs from 2 to 3, and that would be... All right, 3 times 9 is 27 plus 45. Now let's subtract what I got when I plugged in 2. 3 times 4 is 12 plus 30. All right, so 60, 72 minus 42 is going to equal 30. All right, now number three, find the volume of this solid or volume under the graph of this function. And above the region of the xy plane where the absolute value of x is less than 2, and the absolute value of y is less than pi. All right, so I'm going to make that negative 2 to 2 here. Inside those two, you know, tick marks, that's going to be where the absolute value of x is less than 2. And then for y, it is going to need to be between pi and negative pi. And we can you know, draw ourselves our region of integration. I've missed it a little bit, but let's see what I'm going for rectangle through here that'll be my region of integration all right so volume under the graph of a function that's just the double integral so the integral as x runs from negative 2 to 2 maybe i'll do the negative pi to pi on the outside um, x minus sine y yeah yeah i think that'll be the way to go uh, negative 2 to 2 was x's and then we did y's on the outside. All right, so with respect to x, antiderivative of x would be 1 half x squared. Antiderivative of sine y would be x times sine y. And x runs from negative 2 up to positive 2. Okay, then I'll have 1 half of 4 is 2 minus 2 sine y minus, I plug in negative 2, I'd get half of 4 is also 2, 
minus negative 2 sine y. Okay, and so 2 minus 2 is 0, negative 2 minus 2 more would be negative 4 sine y. That'll be my integrand that I'm integrating from negative pi to pi. Right, and so it's an antiderivative for negative 4 sine of y. That would be positive 4 cosine y. So y we'll runs from negative pi to pi, you know, thinking about the unit circle over here, theta equals pi, that's the same as theta equals negative pi, cosine is going to equal negative 1, um, so this thing's unchanged, and so it's going to be 4 times negative 1 minus 4 times negative 1, which is going to equal 0, and that's kind of a letdown. But I bet that x minus sine y has got symmetry over that region. Yeah, I bet if you graphed that thing on a 3D grapher, you'd see that it was somehow symmetric across, um, across the xy plane. Um, all right, find the value of the integral. Show the work that leads to our answer. Okay, e to the y squared with respect to y. Mm, I can't think of an antiderivative. No such antiderivative exists. I need to reverse the order of integration. Okay, so... I've got y equals x and y equals 1. Those are two lines. y equals x goes up like this, y equals 1, like that. Where x goes from 0 to 1, yeah, okay, so that's going to be x equals 1 right there. Okay, that means that my region of integration is, you know, that triangle. Okay, but I need to reverse the order of integration, so I need to get x in terms of y. If y equals x, x equals y. It's a pretty easy switch. And so if I'm thinking about x first, okay, x, if I draw a horizontal representative rectangle, um, I'm going to have x equals 0 as the left edge, the y-axis, and then the right edge is x equals y. Okay. That means that for my bounds of integration, x is going to run from 0 to y. That means it'll need to be on the inside, but that was kind of what I needed if I was reversing the order of integration. And then if I think about y, right here, y equals 0 up to y equals 1. That's where that rectangle is, or that, yeah, that represented rectangle is going to slide. So I'm going to say y is in the interval 0 to 1. All right. So this integral is now equal to the integral as y runs from 0 to 1 of the integral as x runs from 0 up to y of e to the y squared dx dy. And then, you know, you've seen me do an example like this before. Uh, when I anti-differentiate with respect to x, I get x e to the y squared x going from 0 to y. Uh, when I plug in y and when I plug in 0, I'll end up with y e to the y squared. So this is the integral from 0 to 1 of y e to the y squared dy. I might do a little bit of u substitution. say u equals y squared and then du equals 2y dy. I'd only have 1y dy so that'll be half of du uh, and then 0 and 1 will stay 0 and 1. That's kind of a nice coincidence but uh, not the one that I really like to ask on a quiz all that often because then you can be right for the wrong reason if you just completely forget to change the bounds though there's actually no change. Alright so now we're going to integrate u equals 0 up to u equals 1 on all right, the y dy became a 1 half and a du and then it's going to end up being e to the u so Okay, that's our converted integral, so that's that antiderivative is e to the u as u runs from 0 to 1, so that's going to be 1 half of e to the 1 minus e to the 0, and that would be a safe place for us to stop. 
Uh, we can recognize any sort of equivalent answer from that form, I think, in the multiple choice setting. So write two integrals that represent the area of E, one for dx dy, and one dy dx. Okay, yeah. All right, so I'm going to need a sketch of the region. So y equals x plus 1 and y equals x to the 4 over 8 plus 1. Okay, so that's going to be a little bit more centered around the y-axis. All right, y equals x plus 1. Okay, that means that's going to be 1 right there. And then y equals x to the 4 over 8 plus 1. Okay, x to the 4 already kind of looks like a u. So I'm going to see that really that was a little too wobbly, so... And that was pretty bad. Let me try that one more time. All right, that was the best I've got. Uh, what we're going to need to do is find this intersection point. That's going to be important for us to know um, because we're definitely going to need, need that y coordinate and this x coordinate for future balance of integration. So in order to find the coordinates of intersection, I'm going to set the two things equal to each other. I'm going to say x plus 1 equals x to the 4 over 8 plus 1. I'm going to say, all right, well, uh, subtract 1 from both sides, and x would equal x to the 4 divided by 8. Okay, now I want to divide both sides by x, but i got to think, okay, well, what if, what if x was 0? Okay, well, if x is 0, the equation is true, but I already knew the equation was true because I already see that intersection point. I'm happy. Uh, I'm going to just divide both sides by x. 1 equals x to the 3 divided by 8. That means x has to equal 2. So that would be 2, and then the output would be 3. 3, I think it's easier to plug into the first equation, but you can verify that by saying 2 to the 4 is 16, divided by 8 is 2, plus 1 is also 3. And now I've kind of got eh, the coordinates I need. So first I might think about the integral of, with, okay, dy and then dx. Okay, and so the area of the region is just the double integral of dA. So it'll just be dy and then dx. So I need to be thinking about y. Think with a vertical representative piece. All right, so a vertical representative piece would be going from, okay, the, one that, the ones that they gave us, y equals x to the 4 over 8 plus 1 up to y equals x plus 1. All right, so I may need more room. One eighth x to the four plus one to y equals x plus one. And then meanwhile, okay, we think about x, that's going from zero up to two. Okay, so I'm gonna say those are my bounds of integration. That's one integral that works. But then I need to think about dx and then dy. So I'm gonna kind of get rid of all of this. Yeah, I don't need any of the, yeah, none of the writing in red. All right, so if I do dx and then dy, okay, I'm going to need to be thinking about a horizontal representative rectangle. Okay, and that would be x equals this to x equals that. Well, if y equals x plus 1, that's easy enough to solve back for. That would be x equals y minus 1. So on the left, I've got x equals y minus 1. And since it's you know, left to right, I'm going to be having that as my lower bound of integration. Uh, but for the upper bound of integration, I'm going to need to solve for the inverse here. So I'm going to subtract 1 x to the 4 divided by 8. I'm going to multiply both sides by 8 and get 8y minus 8. And then I'm going to take the fourth root of both sides. And now that would normally give me a plus or minus the fourth root. And maybe I'll you know, leave that there for a second. Uh, but I'm looking and all of the x coordinates here are positive in the region I'm interested in. So I'm going to be taking the positive out of the positive or negative. Okay? And we, you know, I actually need that. Um, in order for the inverse to work and also for, you know, this problem to make sense. So I'm going to say this is x equals the fourth root of 8y minus 8. And then fourth root of 8 minus 8.
Okay, and then thinking about y, y is starting off at 1 and ending at 3, so I'm going to integrate from 1 to 3, and that would be an integral in the order dx dy that also represents the area of that region. Number six, okay. Antiderivative, I think this would be another reverse the order of integration. This one doesn't look familiar to me, but a square root of one plus y cubed, that's not something I can think of an antiderivative for. So yeah, I'm gonna need to reverse the order of integration. Maybe this one's a little bit more challenging. Um, y equals x over three up to y equals two. Now it's gonna be a very similar triangle region. Y equals x divided by three. Slope of one third, very shallow, y equals two, maybe that's here. Oh, goodness. Okay, that'll do. So y equals two, y equals x divided by three. Okay, x going from zero to six, yeah, that would make sense. Okay. Yeah, we need to reverse the order of integration, so we're gonna think dx and then dy, so kind of like we did before, thinking left to right. Okay, this is x equals zero, the y-axis, and on the right, I'm gonna have x equals three y if I solve for x. And then, okay, so x, bounds of integration would be zero to three y. And then y is gonna be going from zero to two. And then the integrand would stay the same, x times the square root of one plus y cubed dx and then dy. Now we're just gonna proceed with algebra. So with respect to x, I'd have one half x squared square root of one plus y cubed, because that square root is just a constant with respect to x. x is going to go from zero up to three y. When I plug in 3y, I'd get 9x squared over 2, so 9 halves x squared. I'm actually going to call that 1 half of 9x squared um, times the square root. And then when I plug in x equals 0, the, everything would go away, so I would just, that'll be my integrand. Wait, wait, no, it's supposed to be x equals 3y, so that would be 1 half of 9y squared. Oh, wait, no. Okay, yeah, but I'm gonna write it like that, and then I'm gonna be strategic. Okay, so I see that there's gonna be a u substitution necessary, right? Derivative of one plus y cubed is three y squared. So what I really want, I think, is to turn that into a three halves and then make that three y squared, yeah. So that I can just go for, I think I'm gonna go for this antiderivative without using a udu. Right, because this is just perfect. Um, the derivative of the inside is appearing on the outside, so we're just gonna kind of apply the power rule and, and double check our, our work here. So this is gonna be three halves of, all right. Antiderivative of u to the one half would be two thirds u to the three halves. Uh, that looks promising. So two thirds of one plus y cubed to the three halves. Now, I'm going to just think about the thing inside the square bracket. Okay, when I take the derivative, I would have 1 times the thing in parentheses to the 1 half power times 3y squared for the chain rule. Yes, and that 3 halves is still there just because, um, I don't know, something about the beginning of the problem. And so I'm going to, I've got a good antiderivative. I'm going to let y run from 0 up to 2. And then I'm going to, I'm going to just immediately get rid of these because um, I know that's going to happen. And so 1 plus 2 to the third is 9 to the 3 halves. That would be 27. Minus 1 plus 0 cubed is 1 to the 3 halves is 1. And that would give me 26. That was a really nice problem. Um, I liked how that one went. Now we're going to find the solid of the volume enclosed by the paraboloid in the plane. Okay, so... Okay, that's my paraboloid. That's gonna be you know, where the plane intersects the paraboloid. All right, there you go. So, wait, but that's upside down. Let's see if I can flip that. Um, for some reason, is that? No, but 
can I do? Oh no, I can only make it larger and smaller. Okay, we're gonna have to delete that. Okay, but that's the idea. It's volume enclosed by two things. I'm going to draw a two-dimensional replica of that now. Okay, this is c equals 9, and this is c equals x squared plus y squared, and you can envision that having a little bit of roundness. Okay, but we're going to be integrating top minus bottom. Now the intersection boundary right here, we're going to get by setting the two things equal to each other. So that's x squared plus y squared equals 9, and oh, that's a circle centered at the origin with radius 3. So my region of integration is going to be circular, and I should use polar coordinates, right? So I'm going to be double integrating top minus bottom because volume underneath the plane minus volume underneath the paraboloid would give me the volume enclosed. So top minus bottom, 9 minus x squared plus y squared. Now I know I'm going to be converting this to polar. So x squared plus y squared it needs to activate in your mind. You need to know that's r squared. And then dA is going to be r dr d theta. Our region of integration is, you know, this stuff through here. So r is going from 0 to 3, and theta is going 0 to 2 pi. And then personally, I think you'd be best to... Um, distribute the R you know this is one that you could definitely use a calculator for because it's only got one variable in it uh, but I'm not I'd rather just do it by hand than get the graphing calculator on screen so I'm going to anti-differentiate R equals 0 to R equals 3 r equals 3, that would be 9 times 9 is 81 halves minus 81 over 4, okay, and then when I plug in r equals 0, it would be 0 minus 0, so if I take half and I subtract a quarter, I'm just left with a quarter, so that would be 81 over 4, and so then I'm going to integrate 0 to 2 pi on 81 divided by 4 d theta, and then I'll just multiply by 2 pi, so 81 pi over 2. All right, and that's, yeah, that's the end of this quiz. So that's all for this video. I'm going to come back in a separate video and work all the Form P quizzes. Uh, but that's all for this one. Thanks for watching.